Hello, Richie Stormtrooper here again. Thank you for joining me. Welcome back. As you can see, we are here at the first Imperial Stormtrooper Detachment Forum. We are looking at how you can get your Stormtrooper costume cleared. This is my first address. The first address that I'll give you whenever I recommend you uh, somewhere for research in your costume this is probably the best place to go whether you want to join the 501st legion or not go to whitearmor.net register there you'll get lots and lots of help that's where i learned pretty much everything that i know about stormtrooper costumes as i say this is not just for people who are intending to join the 501st you'll get general help there anyway from everyone and but they've come up with a new thing since i was active on the boards they've got a new forum on there you are able to request request tk tk pre-approval so you can post pictures of this is would have helped me quite a lot actually um back in the day you can post pictures of your costume as you're building it or when you've once you've built it and you can get a, an opinion from the staff on the forum or just the users on the forum help you get a pre-approval because the process of I'll do another video on the process of getting approved getting your costume approved with the 501st Legion for those that are interested on in it but you basically have to contact the GML he's the guy at your local garrison who's in charge of clearing all the costumes obviously he's not got a lot of time to or he or she has not got a lot of time to get back to you with lots of feedback so this is a good place to get lots of feedback whilst you're building you can get your costume ready and start with it the other resource that I recommend straight away is also the 501st Legion. This is the Costume Reference Library. Just volume, um, Google that Costume Reference Library um, for the costume that you're looking for. In this case, it's Stormtrooper New Hope, the standard uh, Episode 4 Trooper. You've got all the requirements, including various different levels of, of uh, accuracy. There are various different levels here we go. Expert infantry, infantry is an, an extra accuracy level. There's a basic clearance level and there's a expert infantry which is blue, marked in blue and blue to, uh, marked in red. You've got the Centurion, so higher standards if you want to go higher standards. I tend to want to make my Stormtrooper costume as accurate as possible. But this is a great base guide. It tells you all the components. There you see the blue text and the Red text, what you, need, what you need for the costume other than your army, you've got your neck seal, requirements, descriptions and that. We're going to have a look at the forum again. In this forum, the request TK, TK pre-approval. I'm going to take one particular case, one actual. This is a, a public forum. You don't have to be a member of the 501st, of course. This is accessible to everybody with an account. So I'm not sharing any secrets here. Obviously, people who are still looking to get cleared, get the costume approved, may or may not be members already. So this has got to be public access. And we're going to look at this. This is an interesting one. This guy, Brad, he is looking to get his costume cleared and he has posted photos. We're going to give me a chance to look at different types of uh, builds, people with different builds, give you some tips about how to and make that work for for your build because obviously I probably got the ideal build I'm just short of five foot eight one meter seventy two slim normal build which pretty much puts me in line with some of the troopers in the original movie they were probably all about five seven five eight to five ten in height and all slim which makes it easier for me but you know not everybody is built the same and pretty much everybody wants to be a a stormtrooper. So what do we got? These are his first pictures. You see that he's uh, slightly more well built than the average trooper. Bigger guy. The armor here it says it's AM 4.5. I think AM was the old. Was the I don't know who does it, but it was the the armor maker that took over the FX, the very early replica armor costume that was not particularly accurate 
and it was always recommended for larger troopers. Since then, I think they've they moved away. This arm is a lot better, but I think what it is, it's basically an RS prop master's recast. But we're not here to talk about recasting. We're just to talk. There's no strict policy on recasting in the 501st. If you can make your armor, whatever armor you have, work and look okay, and you can get cleared, we're not here to be policing people. That's all of the uh, thing for it. So, first thing, I mean, you've mentioned it in the post. So this is, I'm going to have a look at what I pick up on first of all, and then see what members of staff and other users have given him as um, advice. And the first thing that points out, as he's already mentioned it in his post, his belts up. Oops, his belts upside down. That's just a dressing malfunction. He wants to flip that. Seems to be in reasonable position. It's quite high. Some, I mean, it does. It is meant to cover sort of part of the abdomen pieces. This these buttons, but there's a button completely hidden under there. It doesn't really want to become covering that. Probably okay for clearance, but it's a bit high. Maybe when he flips it, it won't be so high. What I notice is that I like very much the helmet from the front. It seems to be built perfectly well. The connect. Well, I don't know whether he's got a connection, but it's one of my pet hates when the biceps here and the forearms are not flush here. They don't connect. There's a, I can't stand it when troopers here have a, uh, <clears throat> a lot of black undersuit showing between the forearm and the bicep. There was a connection, a very tight connection. I'll link a video where I give you a tutorial about that there's a connection between these two parts so that there shouldn't be any hardly any black shown apart from when you bend flex your elbow so that's very good there is however quite a lot of black showing here between the shoulder bells and the chest armor this uh, a lot of people will put this down to him being a bit of a larger trooper here as you can see from the side he's carrying a little bit more weight than the the stunt guys in the film so this is going to happen the chest is going to be pushed forward over his belly that can't be avoided and that's perfectly fine but this there's no real need for this it's, it's minimal but it you can improve on this quite a lot there's a kind of there's at least half a centimeter half an inch there there's a strap connection I'll link again once again the video to the tutorial about making armor get into the uh, biceps uh, sorry the the shoulder bells part and the connection there there's a strap connecting there's an elastic strap going from the chest to the back piece so you can actually see it there linking those two parts and there's a black strap of elastic connecting the shoulder bells it's glued inside the shoulder bell and it connects to that white strap so in in this direction what you want to do is connect it before you glue the shoulder blade shoulder bells to it and make sure you get that shoulder this line this here this edge of the shoulder belt right up snug right up to there and close that up and there's no problem with that causing the shoulder belt to flare out in this this side at all uh, at this side because there's a, an elastic inside the arm normal normally that keeps that all tight and snug so that could be improved You can see he's probably working with some shims. This he's probably got quite chunky thighs. These are looks like these things start off. I'll open this picture in a these thighs are very rounded at the top. If we can compare that to I've got some originals here. I've got here thighs from the archives. Original thigh here. Thigh piece. It's quite a pointy, quite a sharp design. Compare that to that. There, it's rounded them off. That's because he's added shins, shims here. There's some extra material in there, or it's on the on the actual moulds of the parts themselves. Because I say AM, I think's got a reputation for catering for larger troopers. I think my tip would be 
rather than add shims at the front, is add them all at the back because that looks a lot less like a stormtrooper to me. It's lost all the the beauty of that original sculpt from Brian Muir. You know these pointy bits that go at the top. It looks like an old FX suit to be honest. Uh, I'm going to see it from the back. Where is he? Yeah, he's he's gone for the option of putting shims at the front where he could have just made this area bigger. If you're going to put shims in, put it at the back because this is a not a very shapely side anyway. Okay. Yeah, he's got his straps in there as I was talking about earlier. The thing I noticed the I don't know how tall the, the guy is, but he's you notice he's got his back overlapping over the kidney plate here. That should not be overlapping. I'm going to look at for something original. The old promo pictures. This is the old promo pictures, as you can see. You can even see a little bit of flash of undersuit. That is a flush connection. Now these should be connected so that there's a very short strap there, there and there, one in the middle and two on one on either side. It should be so short that it keeps those two two pieces flush, that it's a butt joint. You don't want that to overlap, you really lose out on some of that stormtrooper look. And he's certainly tall enough to be able to get away with that. Here's a trick. You can see here there's a gap between the tabs of the chest and the back. You want to get those touching. When you put your arms together, get those touching and that will raise everything up. So you won't have to have that overlap. And I don't know how he's fitted the straps, but you know, there's no real need for it. It takes away, it really does take away. Now that's the kind of look thing he's going to be going for. It wants to look like that, but it's, that's just because it's raised, because he's raised his arms up. I'm not entirely sure how he's done the internal strapping, but it's an easy fix. One glaring thing here is that he's suffering. He's probably just got the straps too long, to be honest. Probably in the right places, but the straps are too long, allowing, allowing it to sag over the top, and it's also allowing this. You see how that butt plate, let's compare again. It's ex well, you can't really see it that well, but it's exactly the same kind of situation. If you've got anything there that can show it. Something from the archives. There we go. Original suit. Complete butt joint and a complete butt joint. You can see here the screws that are in there to mount the brackets. If you want to see exactly how that's done, I've got a video, I'll, I'll link it on screen now, about the strapping system. These are little things that you should make sure there's a short strap between the brackets. You can use a modern press stud type thing, a more robust type idea. Again, I've got a video on that as well. Modern robust strapping system, look for that in the in my library, in my playlist. But you make the strap short enough and keep these all flush. And going back to him then, I said, you can see he's tall enough to make that work because those tabs aren't touching. If you want, you can even, if you are short, I've I've sometimes trimmed a bit off here so that you get those up, up, up high. So that pulls all that up high and then you don't have a problem with this all sagging. And it's all in one piece. So I understand shorter troopers, they don't want that sagging down too low in the crotch area because it impedes on your walking, but you can get it all to work. I'm five, not as I say, not even five foot eight, and I can get it all to work. If you get those touching, those tabs touching, and you find that raises the neck too much, that in this area it's choking you, it's perfectly acceptable to just cut this neck a little bit wider. I've done it on most of my suits, it allows you to breathe, it doesn't choke your Adam's apple. That's my first impressions. Uh, yeah, his belt was upside down so the holster's in a really weird place and on the wrong side of course. Yeah that's really not necessary. We don't want to see your bum mate. But from that things look pretty okay. He's, he's using plastic handguards I think like the original plastic handguards in the in the suit, perfectly acceptable for basic clearance. 
most kits will include, well all kits will include some plastic handguards but if you want an extra accuracy option and in fact of course that will be sorry, and look at our note on handguards, here we go, handguards, hand plates there's a basic requirement here talking about the shape they can they can be made out of latex or latex type material um, and then obviously for higher ac accuracy these were originally painted latex and in the film you can even see you can possibly see it in this screen grab yeah, sort of you see that the darker points are where the the paint is actually chipping off these are actually quite well intact they were just like the helmet, it's quite successful with a bit of chipping. Um, here's his helmet. Grey frown. A lot of people that are just starting out don't realise that these these details are actually grey. He's gone for a mesh behind the behind the openings. These are just openings are completely open. You can put a mesh in there. It wasn't a feature of the original suit. A, the perfect screen accurate option is to wear a balaclava like a thing that you'd wear underneath your motorcycle helmet which cover which you know makes the area around your mouth black so you can't see skin through there but if obviously if you're trooping in hotter areas it's acceptable to put some mesh in there so people can't look through it's obviously a lot different to being filmed in 1976 for a for a movie and and ha then having you know we might even just be in the background Whereas you've got people right up close and looking at you. These tube stripes are of course blue. Now what strikes me about this is he's done a very neat job on the paintwork. It's perfectly fine for approval I'd imagine. But these lines here are quite thick. Let's see if I can find something original to compare it to. An original helmet. It's not the best picture. Make it bigger. These lines are quite a bit thinner. And also here the lines in the traps. So he's done a neat job. He's probably gone in and painted it black in the corners first and then painted over it in. It, look, it looks very decal like. It's a very neat job, I must say. But I think he's sacrificed. Some of these lines are very thick. They'll be fine for approval. But the black lines be doing with a bit being a bit thinner to be honest yeah that's my um general appraisal of that it'll be cleared in in no time a couple of things to to sort out the boots look fine gone for um white boots probably from imperial boots supplier i'd imagine Supplying pretty much everybody with all their imperial boots as a name. Insist. Let's see what the staff have to say to him. He said our issue right off the bat is your plate, but plate is sticking out. Yep. You need to adjust your strapping. Yep, exactly. This butt plate has picked up on that. These things are up to the discretion of the GML, the officer, the garrison. Costumes officer clearing your uh, costume. You might even let that by, but um, you know it's better to sort it out. Uh, technical advice. Here we go. There's a good view of what it should look like. I don't know what this. This is with a heat gun. You bend strips and put in a mechanism to hold that in place. But really, to be honest, if that these straps are the right length, there's no way that this is going to lift off. That's a good example of a robust strapping system. It's fine. What else? Looks like your belt's upside down. Yeah, we picked up on that. Yep, some good pictures, reference pictures of the belt the right way around. That's just easy to put it on the wrong way around. See if he improved. Now, he didn't pick up on his shoulder bells being too far apart. It's probably okay. I've seen lots of troopers like that, but I would really want to sort it out. That's too much black. Too much black showing. Still, no, no one picked him up on that overlapping. It's again, it's not an absolute requirement, but it, the back should be flush. These should be flush. He looks like he's cured his problem, almost. Yeah, 
could be better. That still needs some attention, I think. I'm really sweating the details now. But I know followers of this channel, we want to be making their Stormtrooper as accurate as possible. But this is a good one for the stronger built, the bigger built chaps. You can see you can make it work. As I say, you can get those shoulder bells. You see, close this gap. On that side, because of his position of his arm, it looks like it's closed. You can get it to work, even for a bigger chap. I would advise you to keep this material at the front of the thighs, as I say, like the original, and put shims at the back. Don't mess about with the shape of the thighs. That's ruined the look for me a little bit. He should be cleared. Yeah, I think this is a series that I'll carry on with. I hope it was informative for you. I'm going to leave it there pick up on little things little details it's about on my channel it's about going the extra mile i will keep doing these look at these maybe one a week and he'll give you some points as you get used to looking at stormtrooper costumes that will keep help me keep in touch with the community see if there's any there we go he got cleared well done what's his name brad well done brad welcome to the 501st i'll keep on with this series it will give us a chance to look at keep up to date with the um, standards of the costumes I can probably learn something, pick up on things but as you can see I picked up on pretty much everything and a little bit more because I'm a little bit more nitpicky and I say I want the most accurate trooper I can. Thank you very much for watching if you did find it interesting please remember to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to try and keep up this series be back, let you know little tips to make your Stormtrooper accurate armour as accurate as possible your costume ready for clearance for the 501st but also a lot more than that we're all about the best possible accurate stormtrooper costume take care and i'll see you in the next one